Thank you, Madam Speaker. I fear the Honourable Member seems to have mistaken today's topic as a supplementary demand for votes rather than for grants. But uh, I, I just wanted to say that very clearly, behind the numbers, there are very serious issues, and that's what I'd like to address today. Uh, my Honourable Colleague, Sri Virupa Moili, has already painted a rather grim picture of the worrying condition of our economy, the declining growth, the uh, decline in manufacturing, in exports, the distress in the agricultural sector, uh, no significant increase in employment, in fact, signs of decrease in many places, the impact of demonetization on employment, and indeed the revenue losses in every state because of the botched implementation of GST. So in these circumstances, the impact on our GDP growth has been serious, and I think we have to take the previous uh, speaker's uh, claims with considerable doses of salt, but that is not what I'm going to I'm not going to spend my time with you on today, Madam Speaker. We are concerned about the fiscal deficit. That has already been addressed by a couple of speakers. The government had said they would hold it to 3.2% of GDP, but we know that by October already, they have spent 96.1% of the full year target. So I don't know in the last couple of months how restrained they have been, but there is some real question as to how now with the new demand for 66,113 crores, in the supplementary demand, whether we are going to be able to retain that number. And I think the finance minister would like to honestly come level with the House as to what exactly our new revised fiscal deficit targets ought to be. I'm also concerned in this context that the Controller and Auditor General in his report has highlighted several flaws in the Union Government's accounting procedures. Uh, in the financial year 2015-16, they've talked about an understatement of both the fiscal deficit and the revenue deficit in that year. And given that, and the apparent misclassification of revenue expenditure as capital expenditure and vice versa, that the revenue deficit was severely understated. The CAG says by 1583 crores, that is 1,583 crores in the fiscal year. And in that case, of course, that means the fiscal deficit technically may already have been breached. I think it would be enlightening if the, if the finance minister would clarify the exact position on that. But Madam Speaker, the reason that we have a supplementary demand for grants is because there are real needs in our country that the government does not have the money to meet. So I want to address some of these real needs that have astonishingly been omitted from the supplementary demands for grants. In my own constituency, Madam, we have seen one of the great tragedies of our country in the course of this year, the horrors of Cyclone Oki howling winds of 165 kilometers per hour that tossed boats as well as fairly substantial fishing trawlers upside down in the seas. 71 people have been confirmed dead, Madam Speaker, and perhaps 100 more have been missing. Each day the number goes up. 75, my colleague says, is the latest figure today. And that is only for Kerala. There are figures from Tamil Nadu, there are figures from elsewhere. So in this time of absolute crisis and suffering, the Kerala, many Kerala MPs today got together, went to see the Prime Minister. I also had the honor of seeing him yesterday to raise a very serious demand for a major, major compensation package. The Prime Minister came to my constituency. He spoke about standing shoulder to shoulder with the victims of Cyclone Oki. But unfortunately, we have seen no significant announcement yet. So far, the Kerala government has made a request for 7,340 crores. Tamil Nadu government has also submitted a request for 9,000 crores. And the fact is that we have need not only for immediate relief measures, but also for slightly intermediate term measures, such as skilling for fishermen, offering vocational training for alternative professions, and so on. And yet, all we've got in the budget is 153 crores in the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund. This is so manifestly inadequate, I would request the Finance Minister, when he replies to this debate, to move an amendment to his supplementary demand for grants granting an additional financial package for the victims of Cyclone Oki. This major tragedy requires nothing less than that sort of attention. In addition, there are long-term measures needed. The inadequate warning systems. Why was it that despite all our paraphernalia, we were unable to prevent our people from losing their lives by going to see the eve of a cyclone? There is, for example, the international system known as the Joint Typhoon Warning System. Why doesn't India participate in this? If it's finance, then I hope the finance minister will find the money. These are human needs. These are our people. These are extremely vital 
precious needs we've got. Similarly, the inadequacy of our search and rescue systems. It's been tragic to discover that we had so few resources available in an area in which so many fishermen are vulnerable. And it seems to me that this is something, again, that our finance minister can help us with through a supplementary demand. I have suggested to the prime minister and to the defense minister the creation of a marine equivalent of the territorial army where we actually turn to our fishing community and we ask them to supply people who know the sea. Give them one month's training perhaps and then after that like the territorial army you can train them one or two weeks a year but they should be available to go out at a moment's notice when their fellow fishermen are lost at sea. This may cost some money, it may cost a few thousand crores, but it seems to me that given the repeated tragedy and suffering that our people are going through, that this should be an omission that the finance minister would wish to rectify in, the, in, in moving this, this supplementary demand for adoption. I do want to say, Madam Speaker, that while there is much I want to say about Cyclone Oki, we all have requested you for a further discussion in more detail. There is much to be done. So I will turn to a few other topics that are also important that have been omitted. Many speakers have alluded to the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. There is a modest request for 4,800 crores uh, in the supplementary demand for grants. We will support that, but that will only permit the government to pay the wages they should have paid, which they have not been paying. We already have demands from every state and there is a group called the Inrega Sangharsh Morcha, a collection of Inrega workers who say that wage payments over 3,600 crores for work already done are pending in this country. So in any case, this money is not going to go very far. Much greater needs are if you just add up the requests from the state governments, they have been totaling about <coughs> 80,000 crores for Inrega, not the 48,000 crores that the finance minister has given. It seems to me that we really need to see a substantial increase, particularly given the economic distress that we have described. People are out of work. People in the rural areas need Mrega in order to be able to survive. Similarly, we have all breathed the foul air of Delhi this winter. Where is the government resource in this budget, in the supplementary demands for improving our air quality, Madam Speaker? Where is the air quality warning system in this country, where are the subsidies that may be required to prevent neighboring states from burning stubble and, and ruining our air? Where is the initiative of the government to say, here is a genuine need, we are all choking and suffering from lack of clean air in the city and indeed in many other parts of India and many of the urban parts of India, here is an extra allocation. We would all support it. We would all support the government, but unfortunately, this has been completely, completely neglected. I notice, for example, that the Women and Child Development Minister is sitting here. She has been given just three lakhs, a meager three lakhs in the supplementary demands. When we know there is not enough money at the moment to give a raise to Anganwadi workers, there is not enough money to set up the promised one-stop rape crisis centers that were announced initially and that have been forgotten. There was supposed to be one for every district. We don't even have two in the country or three in the country so far. Her ministry needs money. Where is the finance minister thinking of giving it in the supplementary demands? He's giving just three lakhs. I might add that he has given 2,995 crores for the power, for power. Clearly, we have a government that understands power but does not understand the needs of women and children in our country. I might add that uh, we also have the Ministry of External Affairs, a modest three lakhs. Here is a ministry, ma'am, that is responsible for our position, our posture in the world, and all that they can afford to give from the finance ministry is three lakhs. We have embarrassing situations when our prime minister and foreign minister make pledges abroad that they're not able to fulfill because the money is not coming or the money has been cut. We are in a situation where I was forced to say during the budget debate that the biggest challenge facing our foreign ministry today, Madam Speaker, is not Pakistan, it is a ministry of finance. I would plead for a little more generosity from the government, from the Ministry of Finance, to these stepchild ministries like the Ministry of Women and Child Development, the Ministry of External Affairs, that need the resources to do their job properly. That is missing from the supplementary demand for grants. I want to ask the Finance Minister briefly about the pension situation in our country. Many of our people who have served this country, including in government institutions, have been living on a bare subsistence wage. There are people now in their old age who are taking home 500 and 1,000 rupees a month. 
A classic case is the Reserve Bank of India pensioners. They were given a commitment that their, uh, their pensions would be updated along with any subsequent wage revisions for serving employees. The promise was made, this attracted them to sign up to the RBI scheme, and now it turns out the finance ministry has refused to approve what was already a promise made to the Reserve Bank pensioners. We now have people who are the custodians of our country's currency who are coming to their MPs and crying, saying we cannot live on the pensions we're getting. I would urge the finance minister to adjust to all this. If I may also allude to the comment of my colleague from the YSR Congress about the MP lads. This is a popular demand, and I hope the finance minister will consider it. But even if he does not, if he does not give it to us right now, though I hope he will, let me at least request him to put a supplementary demand for grants for the Pradhan Mantri Grami, uh, uh, Grams, uh, Adarsh Gram Yojana. The Adarsh Gram Yojana has become a joke because not one paise is attached to it. If you go and ask, not one paise, if you go and ask for, uh, if you go and ask your adopted village and you say, where is the funding for it? We are all told there is no additional money, use existing money, then why have a new label, ma'am? As we have been saying repeatedly, this government and its budgets are really name changing. They're not game changing. They're not changing the game for our people at all. So I, 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 I recognize, Madam Speaker, that uh, there is a great deal more that we can, we can say. GST, for example, has unfortunately affected everything from the issue of sanitary napkins for women, which many women have already taken up with you, Madam Speaker. The disabled people are finding themselves paying outrageously high sums for essential things, cochlear implants, hearing aids, crutches, wheelchairs. I would request the, uh, the, the, the finance minister to kindly waive GST on these things and if necessary, raise the supplementary demand some more. We will accept a breach of the fiscal deficit if he tells us what it is, but we cannot accept a situation in which the weakest and most vulnerable of our society are not being able to afford the basic things they need to survive and cope uh, in our country. Finally, just to say that uh, we know that the Hamari Pradhan Mantri is having man ki baat sunate hain, aap to dhan ki baat karte hain, Vit Mantri ji, zara jan ki baat bhi boliye aapke jawab mein. Dhan ni baat, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Sri Nityananda Rai.